Hi guys, welcome back to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. I'm so excited to have the fabulous Melissa Walsh on the show from MAPS. If, uh, hi JJ. Hi. <laughs> uh, now Melissa Walsh has been working as a published author for 25 years in, in print media. While completing two degrees at university, she's not just a, a pretty face, as a mature <laughs> age student, she began her career in freelance journalism at the age of 30, writing the real estate guide for local newspapers as well as magazine and feature articles. Melissa has written a monthly magazine for the Mornington Peninsula, focusing on lifestyle, celebrity and inspirational stories, and now runs her own business, Melissa Marie Media and Events. A mother of four and a grandmother of two. Gee, you don't look like a grandmother, you look so young. Um, <laughs> Melissa is committed to breaking stereotypes, which was shown by her appearance on Channel 9's Married at First Sight. The first grandmother, I didn't know this, to be cast on the reality show. She has appeared on the Today Show, A Current Affair and Talking Married, as well as mainstream radio and podcasts. She wrote her first novel at the age of 21 and about, about her experience of being a teenage mother and continues to write about her treacherous relationship history <laughs> in her new bio novel, Everybody Deserves a Disaster. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you, JJ. Wow, that was, that sounds like um, someone I'd like to know. <laughs> I didn't know it was that good. <laughs> You're very good. You're awesome. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you on the podcast today. And uh, one of the things I love about you, Mel, I've been following you for a little bit on Insta is you are such, you have such a beautiful energy about you. You oh, have such you. a positive mindset and, and I love that about you. So, but, but I want to go back to the start. How on earth, like when did your journey start with maps? Like when, you know, what made you decide to apply? Yeah, I can see you. Oh, I'm here. <laughs> Sorry, I have no idea what I've done. Can you... Oh, good. Okay. Um, sorry, I've totally lost you. I can't actually see you at all. You don't have to see me. <laughs> okay. Um, so my journey on maps, um, is that what you asked? Sorry. I... Yeah. So, so what, made, what made you apply for maps? Well, I actually um, <laughs> had watched the fourth season with my youngest daughter, Ali. Yeah. I'd never watched it before, but it was one of those few things that um, was something that we could do together. So I was literally sitting there one night after watching the show with Al and had a couple of glasses of red wine and thought, you know what? I'm going to apply for this thing. I saw an ad for it. And sure enough, I applied for it, um, didn't give it any more thought. And then got a, a week later, heard a message on my phone, which had been there for quite a few days, yeah. <laughs> saying, um, would I be interested in actually going on it, that they're interested, that um, they'd like to do an audition with me? And, you know, just went from there. It was a crazy experience. Wow. And what was that inter yeah. What was that process like? Like, did you have to go to a few auditions and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I did. I, it was, first of all, filling out a lot of forms um, that you have to go through so much in terms of your... Um, all of your history, you have to put down everything, your dating history, um, marriages, you know, how many partners you've had, like they give you so much, so many things that they ask of you. Yeah. And then you go through to all these different levels. So then I went through to the next level, which was actually going in, meeting up with the producers and having kind of like an actual filmed audition. So you go and do that. The whole process, like I applied in March and was accepted in August. So, and then we got married in September. So it's a very, very long, arduous process, but it's actually a lot of fun because you learn so much about yourself. Yeah. What, what did you learn about yourself, Mel? Oh gosh. I, I actually, by answering the questions that they asked of me in terms of relationships, um, in terms of like what went wrong in your relationships, all of that kind of stuff. I actually learned that, um, I learned to understand why I'd made the choices that I'd made. It was almost like a counselling session. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, why I'd made the choices that I made. But probably more importantly, 
what I actually want because they ask you so many times, what do you want out of a relationship? Be specific. What do you want? And funnily enough, even though I was in my fifties, I'd never actually really asked myself, what do I want? I'd already, I'd always just thought, I'm just happy if somebody likes me. So, you know, what do they want from me? Not what do I want in a person? So wow. it was so liberating. It was fantastic. Wow. That would, that's a huge aha moment, isn't it? Absolutely massive. And it's one of those beautiful moments that happens when you least expect it. And out of something that you would think could be quite superficial, it actually was something that gave me a lot of insight into myself and what I want and sort of, I don't know, it just helped me to grow. It probably sounds a bit crazy, but yeah, that's the effect that it honestly had on me. Wow. And was yeah. the whole experience of math, mass, was it what you expected? I had no expectations. I actually went into um, maths thinking I'm just going to be myself. Yeah. I'm going to, well, this is the advice of my father, be yourself okay. and have a great time. And so I thought, you know what? If I go in there, I'm 100% myself. Don't embarrass my children. <laughs> and, and have a good time, you know, and just kind of give in to the whole process. Um, gosh, that was just such a wonderful experience as well for me. I mean, you are taken out of your comfort zone 100%. It is incredibly scary. Yeah. But bloody hell, it's a once in a lifetime experience, you know, that not a lot of people get to have. So I feel so lucky that I had that experience. I yeah. really do. Was it easier or harder than you imagined? Yeah. Um, easier in as much as that like, John and I got on absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, we hit it off straight away, had a really great, great friendship and, you know, maybe a little bit of a relationship as well. Um, so it was easier in that way because he was just so lovely. Yeah. Um, but it was incredibly hard being away from my family. Yeah. I really, really struggled um, being away from my dad and my children. Um, my daughter, Chloe, just before... Um, I was accepted on the show, found out she was having a baby, you know, Ali was only 15. So she had to go and live with my son for a few months. Um, being away from my dad who was starting to age and dad and I had an incredibly close relationship. So, um, yeah, that was really, really hard. So like I said, like a bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, was, what was the best part of the experience? You, you've cut out a little bit there. Oh, sorry. Can you? Oh, there hear you go. That, yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. <laughs> um, meeting meeting the other cast. Um, there was some just amazing people that I have still got really deep friendships with, which is just amazing. Again, coming out of something that's kind of superficial. Yeah. Um, these incredible bonds happened yeah. going to New Zealand I loved going to New Zealand for a honeymoon loved getting dressed up all the time for yeah. you know, anything you know I adore that so you know the wedding was so fun and oh gosh and actually um my dad passed away last year and for me it was kind of like dad's last hurrah you know yeah. dad was always into adventures so I got to share that with my dad. Um, he walked me down the aisle or, you know, the grassy knoll, really. <laughs> um, and God, he had so much fun in that. And he was really proud of me doing it as well because I was 100% myself. So Yeah, I love yeah. that. What was the worst part of maths? The worst part was feeling manipulated, um, feeling a little bit unsure about what was true and what wasn't in terms of things that the producers were saying to us. Yeah. Um, I remember, you know, I was very happy to give it a go with John. I had a very open mind to the whole situation of uh, marrying a stranger. You marry. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, um, but basically I got a little bit scared within the sort of second or third day were, that John and I, after John and I had met and we'd gone to New, we were in New Zealand and the producers were saying things to me like, oh, he really likes you. He really likes you. You know, you know, you need to sort of give him more and show him that you like him more and stuff like that. And I was thinking, 
yeah, I don't get the impression he likes me. I get the impression that he's open to this, but yeah. you know, I feel like we're just taking it a day at a time, you know, like stop pushing me. So yes. it definitely started to feel like we were going to be a little bit manipulated. Um, yeah. I found that a little bit scary, um, not knowing what was really the truth and what wasn't. So, yeah. And yeah. from seeing the, the show before, you would have seen so much drama that happens in those shows. Like it's just, I, I joke when I watch it and I say, I'm just watching it cause I'm a coach. I just want to see about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's all for research. Yeah, all for research. It's only about me researching human behavior. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, there's yeah. so much drama. Were you, were you concerned how you were going to come across or what, 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 um, yeah, how you would be seen out there in the public? I actually wasn't concerned um, because I actually thought, you know, I had a bit of a compass and my compass was don't embarrass the kids. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, and actually John was really good because I have a tendency to drink too much wine. And every time we had a dinner party, he'd say, slow down, miss. Like they will get every negative thing. So, yeah. you know, have drinks when we're not on camera, but he said, like, just be careful, you know, because obviously he'd yeah. done it before. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. But I wasn't, I actually wasn't worried, actually, now I'm thinking about it, until the first um, commercial aired. Yeah. Um, because you go away, you know, we filmed that in the September. The first commercial doesn't air till January. Yeah. And, you know, you're back, you've done the reunion relationships either going on or it's not um and then all of a sudden bam you're there saying you know i've made terrible mistakes with with men um and all of a sudden you think jesus christ what uh how am i gonna come across like you don't know how you're gonna be edited but i knew that i had really a hundred percent been myself and you know so I thought, well, if they do, if they play, they could only play with my words and, you know, they could only like actually edit my words. So, or get someone to speak, to, speak words over me or something. <laughs> bad. And I think, you know, sometimes I've seen shows and I'm sure that they do that, you know, they stop, they, you know, they stop a bit of your sentence and then it seems like it's, it seems like someone's doing something that they're not doing, you know, it can be manipulated. So oh, they do. No, they definitely did. Like there yeah. was only one time that I personally was manipulated with my words and that was just a silly thing. It was nothing important and nobody would have even really noticed this, but I knew it because I was like, no, nah, I definitely didn't say that, which yeah. was, we had a, um, Troy and I had to meet up and have a little chat about, you know, how our relationships were going. Troy was one of the other cast members with a different girl. So John met up with his, you know, wife and I met up with Troy and um, they kept trying to say to me, Troy was flirting with you, wasn't he? And I was like, no, Troy definitely wasn't flirting. <laughs> and like, no, he really was. He was. And I was like, he definitely wasn't. Trust me, Troy was not flirting. But they actually said, Troy was definitely flirting with me. That's as if I'd said that. So they've just yeah. manipulated it. That's my only experience of being manipulated in the whole thing. Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. And, what, and I know that, that from maths, a lot of the, or some of the, the cast members have, have had a major issue with trolls afterwards. You know, people saying negative things on social media. Uh, uh, yeah. How did, how did it, did you get much of that? And if so, how did you handle it? Um, yeah, I did. I definitely didn't get as much as the people who were presented badly. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> like Dean got, you know, terrible, terrible, awful trolling. Yeah. Um, I really had more, funnily enough, it was more women in my age bracket yeah. that were kind of saying things like she should cut her hair. Um, why is she wearing clothes that are so, you know, young? Not that I do. Um, you know, just stuff like that. I, there was forums about my hair extensions. Forums? <laughs> wow. There was like hair forums about my hair, either how bad it was or how people liked it. Like it was just, I only found out that via people saying, have you seen this? And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so, Wow. I'd have the, I'd look, I'd have the odd thing, but really yeah. my experience was basically really positive. So I cannot complain about it. Yeah. And I know we chatted on the phone 
uh, the yeah. other day and I said to you, you know, I saw someone wrote something on on one of your posts and you were so, you came back so positive and I'm like, That's you good. go girl, like you go girl. I know JJ, but don't you think that not feeding the beast yes. is probably more upsetting to them? It can because- be. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, to come back and kind of not be, you know, all sweet and lolly, you know, lollipop like or whatever, but to come back and just sort of go, oh, yeah, okay, well, that's fair enough. You know, sorry, I didn't mean to come across that. Or, you know, I don't know, just to to treat someone with the respect that you would like to be treated with. Yeah. Even if they're hideous to you. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. I, I have a process where, you know, because I'm so much about my tribe and I love, you know, the people that are in my tribe, I absolutely love them and I respect them. And so I protect my tribe and I protect what I put out there. And so uh, if people, to me, if they're behaving badly, they're gone. They're gone. (laughs) I don't them. Yeah, Yeah, no, no, that's really gorgeous. Yeah, if I can comment back and then they can turn around, all cool, or else they're gone and they're blocked on Facebook. I never see them again. No, I look. I am prone to blocking. I'm not going to lie, especially (laughs) on Instagram. I mean, sometimes I remember after it finished. um, Wow, I got so many messages from people, you know, that were, <laughs> let's say, R-rated. And I was just like, oh, my God. It was almost like I was so naive. I was like, block, block, block. You yeah. <laughs> oh, there's some worries out there. Oh, there really is. There really is. Yeah. What have been your biggest learnings from being on that show? Oh, my gosh. Um. I learned probably the biggest thing I learned was that I'm much stronger than I thought I was. Um, I think I've had, I've done a lot of things in my life, but I don't think I've been particularly confident and I didn't become egotistical. I just became self-aware and I thought, you know what, I handling being in that situation where you have no control, everything that's familiar is taken away from you and you've got the other other side as well where you actually feel like possibly you're being manipulated yeah um is quite a challenging thing to do but i actually realized i'm really really strong yeah. because i handled it well not only do, do i feel like i handled it well i actually enjoyed myself yeah you know, amongst all of that uncertainty i actually was still able to enjoy it so definitely um probably was a great part in my road to sort of self-discovery and self-love yeah, i love that and mm-hmm. and who do you think the melissa was before maths and after maths because it sounds like you had some growth some personal growth on oh, definitely. Maths. what definitely. do you think that shift was for you um <laughs> To be quite frank, I think the Melissa after maths would not take any shit. Yeah. You know, whereas before that, I was very much a pleaser. Yeah. Um, I've always been like that, um, which has, you know, been to my detriment, I believe, um, because you're pleasing because you don't have any faith in yourself or confidence. And um, But with this, I just felt like I just stopped being <laughs> such a pleaser. Now, in that, I actually lost some friends. Yes. So it's not, a, it's not a fairy tale. Um, people just started to fall by the wayside. I don't actually believe that I really changed that much in the essence of who, who I am. Yeah. Um, but I did stop letting people walk all over me. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a beautiful. So, so you, you, you know, I think that that's also a journey in relationships because you've got to love yourself before someone else loves you fully as well and respect yourself and have those boundaries yeah and you know that was my thing um that I had no boundaries with people I I really didn't um especially in relationships I (laughs) seriously it was like a chameleon I would just become whatever that person wanted I was very good at working out what they wanted and now I look at it look back and I think most of the relationships I've had didn't even really like them that much I just I was just wanting to have someone you know yeah Yeah. Mm. so the big question is and I think I know the answer have you found love I have actually found love like proper love love. yes I've got a beautiful beautiful fiance um Fred he's an artist and 
met him, you know, just before we went and did the show, we had like a couple of dates um, and, you know, didn't, what was you know, dating lots of people um, and sort of didn't really think anything of it, went off and did the show. And then when I came back um, after John and I actually split up, Fred found me on social media and said, oh my God, where have you been? You know, da, 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 da. And then I went, well. <laughs> <laughs> I've been married. <laughs> no, he actually saw commercials for it. He was like, oh. <laughs> In that short time I've been married and now we're split up. <laughs> uh, you know, this is my life. <laughs> so no, he's just wonderful. Honestly, JJ, um, I haven't had a relationship like this before. I yeah. believe that they were probably out there, but I just didn't have very high expectations for myself. Yeah. Um, and I didn't, yeah, I didn't have any expectations to be honest. So, you know, to have this wonderful man who, when we do have arguments and we do, um, we communicate. I don't feel like, oh my gosh, I need to like change my behavior so much. Otherwise he's going to leave, you know, yeah. all those old kind of habits and um, tactics that I used to use. I don't even use, I feel like I love him, but I don't need to be with him. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just great. He adds something to my life, which I honestly did not think was going to happen. I genuinely thought, even though I did maths, I genuinely, after all of my, you know, horrible relationships, I genuinely thought, gosh, I'm just not meant for this. This is, you yeah. know, <laughs> Melissa, like concentrate on something else. Get a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. And did, uh, and I know that, you know, you, you had so much love for your dad and you were so close to my dad and I can really relate to that. My dad, passed away when I was 17 and we were very, very close. Uh, did he get to meet your man? He did. He oh. did and he really liked me. Oh, I can't hear you again. Oh, sorry, I haven't oh, moved can't... anything. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. So I haven't moved, so I'm not quite sure what's going on. Um, yeah, he really, he did. He really, really liked Fred. He, um, we, I was brought up in kind of like an artistic and creative family. So when I told dad that Fred was an artist, he was wow. like, oh, you know, we'll see about that. We'll, you know? and, then, <laughs> and when he met him, he thought, yeah, because dad had this saying every time I, most of the time when I would introduce dad to a new, you know, beau, dad would go, because um, dad was so honest with me, he'd go, I've got paddles deeper in my driveway, love. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, going from your from from the success of your old relationships, maybe you know he's a very smart man. <laughs> oh, he was spot on. Like, he was absolutely spot on. The only one that was decent was my first husband when I was eighteen. But yeah, yeah. but yeah, no. <laughs> um, yeah, he and, so, and and you've had some really, you know, you've lost your dad. When when did you lose your dad? Um, dad died in May last year. Yeah. Yeah. And so you've gone through that and then you've gone through also the challenge of your granddaughter. Yeah, like, it's been a really tough, um, it was a very tough year last year, actually. Um, yeah. So dad died in May and then my little granddaughter, Ava, was diagnosed with leukaemia in August. Wow. And how old is she? She's just turned six. Yeah. So how have you, how have you navigated through those two, like two things, you know, in close you know, proximity of time. How have you navigated through those times? Well, it's like living your own life. I, yeah. um, I would honestly say I've probably gotten to the lowest that I've been in terms of feeling a bit hopeless. Um, my dad was like my rock and my mentor. Um, dad would be the person that I would talk to about Help, helping me get back on track if I was, you know, if I'd lost my way a bit. And so dad wasn't there to talk to. So really, gosh, I felt, I felt him passing so deeply more, more than I ever imagined was possible. Yeah. Um, so when Ava got, um, you know, when Ava was diagnosed, again, I was just in probably a bit of a dark place. I, funnily enough, one of the things that got me through was finishing my book um, dad's always said to me, my writing is like such a cathartic thing for me. So I've written ever since I was, you know, my first book I wrote when I was, well, I started writing it when I was 19 after my first baby was born. Um, it's just been my way of getting through. So I kept writing and I just wrote and almost like wrote myself out of 
not the sadness, but the the despair. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that being positive, realizing that, you know, you have choices in life and we have to keep keep going on, don't we? We have to keep going on. And I decided rather than just feel like, oh my God, Dad, where are you? I miss you so much. I'm going to feel like I would rather sort of say to him, look what I've done now, Dad. Yeah. You know, because I do feel like he's still with me. Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Mm. And how have you gone through with the COVID challenges? Because you're in, you're in the uh, lockdown four, are you? Oh, we are. We're in stage four. Stage four, Victoria. yeah. It is really challenging. I, love, I, look, I'm very good. I think I've got a very strange personality because I love being away from people, but I also love socialising. I'm so, same. I'm same. It? It's just this sort of thing of, God, what? Well, first of all, when this happened, I thought, why did I pass up so many awesome invitations just because I'm so lazy and would rather stay home and watch Netflix? Because <laughs> um, now I can't go anywhere. Um, I, I'm trying to make the most of it. I guess like everybody, you just day at a time, you know, really we're being asked to stay home. That's all we're being asked to do. It's not like we've got to go and have, you know, horrible treatments all the time or anything like that. So... Yeah. Um, yeah, doing lots of writing, um, you know, just doing some courses. I'm obviously going to do a course with you and, yeah, just trying to keep busy. Yeah, beautiful. I can't wait for you to be on my course. I've I been waiting so now. I've been I waiting. I, and uh, I'm, so, I'm such a good – I'm a baker now, I, I tell my husband. So every second day I'm baking bread. God, I love bread. Oh, with lots of butter. I know, I know. So oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah. Oh, good on you. Whereabouts are you? You're in. Are you in the stage four area also, or not? No. So Geelong stage three. Okay. So, so you're just basically masks, social distancing. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have like the curfew and all that. No, sort of I have the curfew, and um, I'm a bit. Of, I'm a bit of a rebel. I was always a rebellious teenager, and I. I <laughs> I've grown out of it, Mel. So, um, oh my God, we are so identical. I was too. But fortunately, we can. I love the beach, so I can still go to the beach. So that's um, oh, that's cool. a good thing. That's my. Yeah. I call it, that's my happy place. Yeah, being able yeah, to go absolutely. to the beach. That's um, so now, good. Now you talked about your book, and I love your book. And you sent it to me. Thank you so much. And I got it today. Oh, thank goodness. Wondering. Here it is, guys. Yeah. It was so hilarious because I that face, that face that you <laughs> Well, I um oh, I wanted it to be quirky. Well I wanted to I put this on my social media guys, some of you would have seen it that are listening. Okay. And I was trying to do your face. Oh were you? <laughs> Taking a photo and trying to yep. put your face next to my face and do the face, but I freaked not. I could not do it, Mel. I was hopeless at doing it. So funny. I um yeah. I just decided that you know, because you know, like on Instagram and all that sort of stuff, you try to put nice photos that look kind yeah. of classy and all that sort of stuff. And I thought, you know what? I I actually want to have this book cover where I'm making a little bit of fun of myself, you know, and sort of going, oh, God, here she goes again. And, of course, I had to have the martini and stuff like that. (laughs) I absolutely love it. So so tell us about your book. What is it? What's your book about? Uh, Well, my book is basically um, about getting to like a really low point in my life uh, about six years ago where I lost everything. My husband left. Um, he took all the money. I lost my house, um, which I'd paid off by myself, by the way. Um, and then I drank too much and lost my license. So I got to a very bad place. I guess the only thing I still had was my family and my job. Um, so my book is really about why it's called Everybody Deserves a Disaster. Is Dad taught me that it's the bad things that happen to us that are actually the best things for us. And they're kind of like, you know, a blessing in disguise, all of those cliches. But the fact is that I discovered by losing everything that I actually could find myself. I had to get to rock bottom to realize that I cannot keep doing this. Like a lot of women and some men, I was in constant, constant bad relationships, constantly 
um, underestimating my worth, um, you know, ended up with narcissists and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And yeah, so my book is basically about the life lessons that I've learned, um, the sort of mistakes I've made along the way and how you can actually bounce back. And it's all a matter of your attitude, you know, and it's not a Pollyanna. It's not life is a fairy tale. Life is bloody hard. And you know what, we make mistakes and what you really need to do is forgive yourself for it and get on with it and don't do it again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I had a, a quick look for it. I'm like, oh, I've got to look at this book. I've got to read this book. And I looked near the end and it, I, I saw that the title comes from your dad. Is that right? That's right. So, okay. um, so my dad was a poet. Yeah. And um, I've got books and books of his poetry. And um, he was writing a poem before he died called Everybody Deserves a Disaster. Yeah. And he never got to finish it. And I actually said to dad one day in the palliative care unit, because I was ringing, I was like bringing him in bits of my writing to read and stuff like that. And he, I said to him, what's this poem that you're writing? And he said it was called Everybody Deserves a Disaster. And I was like, oh. Dad, can I use that for the title of my book? Because what you're writing about is everything that I'm talking about in my book. And he was like, yeah, yeah. So he never got to see the final book, but it's, you know, a tribute to Dad and everything that he believed. Yeah, beautiful. And I loved, I loved at the back, it says, my father had five rules to live by, which he calls Carr's Law. So why, why is it Carr's Law? Well, my dad's was David Carr. Carl, yeah, that's his surname. That was my maiden name. Yeah. And they grace his tombstone today. So survive. Pain is inevitable. Misery is a choice. I love that. Treasure quiet moments. Never look for gratitude. Just do it. Love, love that. And when disaster <laughs> looms, all you have left is style. I know. I love that one. I know. And you, like, you just live this. Like I just look at, and I'm thinking, gee, you can tell that that's your dad. Like you just, yeah. he's just really, you know, I remember seeing him on the show and thinking how cute he was, <laughs> but he's such a cute man. Yeah. Um, and a real dapper dresser. And, you know, dad was like, um, you make things an occasion, you know, and you, and you really, you know, enjoy every moment as much as you possibly can, you know, and yeah, he just taught me to, you know, have this joie de vivre that he had, which I, you know, I lost for a little while, but I know I've definitely got it back and I kind of feel him around me now sort of going, good on you, love. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I love that. And, and with your book, what, what message do you want? What's the, the main message that you want your readers to get? from reading your book? Um, well, you know, I'd be very, very happy if people got out of my book that if they played in my shoes. Yeah. Don't, don't constantly berate yourself. You've gone quiet again. I don't know. Oh, oh there you, you go. <laughs> I don't know Can what's going on. A little bit. It's, it's um, louder. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so really it's don't, you know, it's okay to make mistakes. Yeah. Don't berate yourself um, for making bad choices yeah. because everything that we do leads us to the next step and the next moment. And there is always an opportunity to learn and to grow and to love yourself, you know, and I had to learn that by losing everything. Yeah. And I got to, I was just mortified, you know, absolutely mortified that my children yeah had seen me get to such a low point again, you know? Um, yeah. So just, you know, forgive yourself, get on with it. Um, I would like them to read all of the awful things that either I caused or happened to me um, and sort of go, Oh, okay. Well, you know what? If Melissa can bounce back from this, I can bounce back from this divorce. Yeah. Or I can bounce back from this health issue that I'm going through or, you know, it's all about attitude. Yeah, absolutely it is. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I love your attitude and I can't wait to read the rest of this book. And how, how can they get your book? So my book is available on um, www.everybodydeservesadisaster.com.au. Yeah. So if you 
put that in. Um, you can also go to my Instagram, Melissa underscore maths. Um, there's a link in my bio to buy the book. So it's on, you know, it's on Amazon and Kindle as well. So you can download it on Kindle. I love it. I love it. And you've got, tell, tell us about your business. We've talked about um, you've got a, an event and media business. I do, yeah, yeah. Well, it's not really so much events at the moment. Um, it's really media. What I do is I do book editing and book publicity for people and just write, you know, website. I do websites for them. Um, yeah, any copywriting that needs to be done, really. So I'm working on a couple of books at the moment, which is crazy. One lady is like 20 years old. The other is 85. Oh, so, wow. And wow, I tell you what, reading these people's stories, it's an absolute honour to be yeah. able to help them. So, you know, if anyone's got a book out there that they want edited, let me know because, yeah, um, yeah I really, really love helping people. You know, for me, writing my book was such a major accomplishment and, um, you know, I'm really loving helping these people make their dreams happen as well through their books. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I, well, I'm, in the, I'm in, in the midst of writing mine, Mel. And, awesome. Uh, okay. My very first book and I'm oh. really excited. My, my clients keep saying, when are you going to write a book? When are you going to write a book? So I'm listening, guys. <laughs> Wow, I cannot wait to read that or yeah. help you edit it. One or the other. Or both. I know. Well, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, my book, I, I want it to be something that uh, it's like a, you know, someone can go to it for, for their life and be able to go into it and go, right, if, if I've got a challenge, I'm going to open this page. I love that. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that sounds so wonderful. Yeah. So it's great yeah. to know that I've got someone like you that um, that is is there for the editing and that. So I'll keep that <laughs> Yeah, totally absolutely <laughs> so um tell, so what's next for melissa so you you're doing uh, you've, you've done your show you've got yep. your book you've got your yep. uh, uh, media company what's next for you yeah well i um am looking forward to working with you doing yeah. doing your course i'm so excited about that yeah. ideally what i'd like to do is learn how to do public speaking i would really love to be able to do like a circuit um take my book there but really talk to women in particular about um, recovery from bad relationships and finding yourself again um whether you're you know 20 30 40 50 60 you know 80 um, that it's never, you know, it's never too late. So I'm really excited about the prospect. That's kind of, you know, marinating for me how I'm going to do something like that. Wonderful. And guys listening that, uh, you know, Mel and I are working together. So she's going to be getting on that circuit really strongly. So I'd be messaging her and uh, asking her to speak at your events because Mel's got a fantastic story. And as you can hear her energy and, um, you know, you've got so much to offer an audience, Mel, and I can't wait to work with you to get you on as many stages as possible. And with your book, because the, the combination is brilliant for people to yeah. hear your story, you know, and what I love about storytelling is that you, you can get so much out of it. As you said, you can read your story and see yourself in the story, even if your story is different from theirs. Absolutely. But yeah. Story, go, okay. Well, Hey, maybe in my situation's a little bit different, but if, if Mel can do it, I can do it. You know, she's gone through all yeah. of these different challenges. Um, yeah. I, I want to be more than a cautionary tale, you know, like I want to, I want to actually let people see that, okay, well, it's okay to make mistakes. Like it's actually fine to make mistakes. I mean, try not to keep doing it. Don't do it as a, you know, career like I have, but you know, come, you can bounce back from these things. So, yeah. yeah. I think that's so important because, and particularly with speaking, right? I say this all the time. I say to my clients, they're so, they can be so fearful of making a mistake. Yeah. And that's what, you know, the fear of public speaking is. It's about the fear of being seen and being judged and not doing it right. Uh, and I say to my clients, I stuff up all the time. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. it's okay. You know, yeah, when you yeah. can stand on stage and be able to speak your truth yeah. and know that it's not about you, it's about serving other people. That is so spot on. Yeah. Uh, that is just wonderful, JJ, because that's exactly 
what I get from hearing other people's stories, um, I get that more than just someone telling me this is what you should do. It's yeah. hearing other people's truths. It's starting to, you know, it gives you a sense of, you know, community and all of that sort of stuff, but really shows you that I can relate to this, you know, and um, I don't know, it's just so, so powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. So how will people connect with you so they can get, they can watch, look at you on Instagram? Follow you on Instagram. Yeah, Melissa underscore maps. I've only got the maps there because I don't know how to change it. <laughs> well, you know, my uh, my executive assistant, I keep telling her, you've got to change your Instagram because right. she's got something wino. And I say, you can't have wino. Oh. <laughs> it's something you know how to change it? Because I seriously don't know how to change mine. My children have said to me that many times, oh, mum, get rid of the maps. Like, it's over. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> I'll talk you through that if you want to change it. We can talk through it at your okay. session. <laughs> that would just be so wonderful. <laughs> right, now, are you ready for JJ's rapid fire questions? Absolutely. I was All born right. ready. All right. <laughs> okay. What is the best piece of advice being given to you? Um, never wear pink with green. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't. <laughs> you can tell you love fashion, woman. You can tell <laughs> the best piece of advice out there in the world. Never wear pink with green. <laughs> oh, oh, well, there's so much. I've actually had so much good advice from my dad. So, <laughs> yeah. I, I, but I love that. Uh, <laughs> what's your favourite book other than your own? What's your favourite book? Heartburn by Nora Ephron. Burn. Heartburn by Nora Ephron. Oh, I haven't heard that one. Yeah, it is so good. Oh, my God. It's another one where you read it and go, oh, my God, I cannot believe these awful things happened to this woman. But, God, she's funny. And how strong is she? She just bounces back. Oh, is it a true story? It's a true story, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Worth, worth reading. Okay. Who would play you in a movie? Oh god, who's that little short blonde? I'm trying to remember. She was in Legally Blonde. So what's her name? Oh, Reese Witherspoon. Yes, Reese Witherspoon. Ah, uh, you know who I was thinking of? Hey. And I've normally every time I I interview someone, I've normally got it right. I I normally go, okay, this is who they'd say. Yeah. Heather Locklear. Do you remember Heather Locklear? She's so pretty and skinny. <laughs> Heather Locklear. <laughs> okay, well, I'll take that. I will 100% take that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's one thing on your bucket list? Um, go to California. Ah, beautiful. Yeah. If you could trade lives with anyone for one day, who would it be and why? I can't hear you again. <laughs> Um, I'm, <laughs> can you hear me now? Wow, it's just like it's so touchy. I've literally w moved a second, you know, just a milli, milli centimeter away. Um, I would trade lives with. God, oh God, this is really hard. Um, the Queen. The Queen. Yeah. What, would, what would you do as the Queen? I would um, just like fluff around the castle and order everyone around and go and watch like any movie that I wanted to on the biggest screen in the palace and wear all the jewels and play with the corgis. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> what are three words that describe you? Positive, um, vivacious and jealous. <laughs> and jealous. Where's the jealous come in? Oh, I've just got a very bad jealous streak. Uh, have you? Terrible. It's awful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, we'll one, it's my worst trait. It's my worst trait. We'll work on that. Okay. Um, that sounds good. <laughs> if you could have any five people uh, at a dinner party, whether they're alive or dead today, who would you choose? My dad. Yeah. Um... This is so silly because I've got 
Yeah. Okay. My dad. Um, oh God. Um, Muhammad Ali. Henry Kissinger. Um, um, Vera Wang. Hi. <laughs> and Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh, yeah. That's not surprising. <laughs> 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 if you could have one superpower, who? What would you have? Um, the ability to eat anything and not put on weight. <laughs> You're tiny anyway. I've My goodness, I put on a few isoculus, <laughs> <laughs> but I just love eating so much. I know that's why I cook so much. <laughs> like it's just ridiculous. <laughs> uh, what TV sitcom family would you be a member of? Um, oh gosh, probably, um, fam, oh, what was that feud one? Family, uh, oh, what was that one with, um, with the father and the mother and they were complete opposites and then the kids, what the hell was that? It was like an 80s sitcom um family ties no family ties <laughs> yes because my mum and dad were polar opposites and us kids grew up all very very different so. yeah <laughs> yeah family. and the last question is what legacy do you want to be remembered for being kind to people yeah mm. beautiful Love it. Love it. Well, thank you so much, Mel. <laughs> thank and, you, uh, JJ. And I can't wait to read your book. And I will say to the guys, please make sure you go out and get this book. Everybody deserves a disaster. And those of you that are seeing it in uh, on video right now, look at the, cl it just is a classic photo. I absolutely love it. <laughs> uh, and yeah, get out there and, and buy it. Make sure you follow Mel on social media on Instagram because, uh, you know, I love following you and you're so positive. You're such a, I often say this to my clients, your tribe is your vibe, right? So you've yeah, got yeah. to surround yourself with positive, amazing, inspirational people and you're one of them. So, you know, everyone that's listening, make sure you follow Mel and make sure if you're someone that's in corporate or you're wanting a, a speaker for your events, this is Mel. Mel is going to be, you know, on the speaker circuit in a big way. So make sure that, uh, you know, she's got a great story and a great message to tell. So thank you so much, Mel. I can't wait to, to be working with you. Can't wait for you to come to my courses. I am so excited. It's really giving me something to look forward to, JJ. So thank you so much for today as well. It's so nice to talk to you. Yeah, I know. It's lovely to talk to you. So thank you so much. And, uh, and I can't wait to work with you. Thanks, Mel.